Whittle's probability via expectation book. So the first thing he wants you to see, which is pretty pretty easy, is that uh, the sample mean, as it's usually defined, can equivalently be written as the sum of the xi's times their proportion in the sample. So to, to give a concrete example of that, if our, if our sample was 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, we see that we could take the sample mean by simply adding them up and dividing by 5, and we get 7 fifths. Or equivalently, we could, have, we could have noted that there were three ones out of five. Uh, so we take that proportion times the, the actual value. And we would add to that the proportion of twos, which was two-fifths, two out of the five times that value, which is two, and we get the same thing. So he just wants you to see that this average and this this formulation of it are are saying the same thing. Okay, then things get a bit tricky. He wants you to understand this this average operator. Um, and the way he introduces it is like not. It's honestly, I don't think it's very friendly. Like he starts off talking about like a census. So I came up with like this super simplified census that only cares about two indicator variables. Like it's going to record people's gender and it's going to record whether they, they're employed or unemployed um, as either a one for male, zero female, and then for employed we go for one and zero for unemployed. So this is like, this is the, the way we want to see it. Our, our overall sample space, omega, consists of these possible um, these possible points. You could be male and employed, male and unemployed, female and employed, or female and unemployed. And so the way that we want to think about these are these lowercase omega values. So if we just take an individual at random from our population, we're going to get like a realization or an instantiation of little of lowercase omega. In particular, it's going to be the, the individual has to be either omega-1, omega-2, omega-3, or omega-4. Okay, so basically in our census we have two random variables happening. We can call them x1 for gender and x2 for employed or unemployed. Um, so when they say that like x omega x omega is a function, right? So we grab our person, and let's say our first person that we grab is double is an omega 1. Okay. So basically, we map omega 1, okay, with respect to x1, say, for x1, x1 of omega 1 is equal to 1. So this is like... So x, x1 is a random variable, and it's a function of this sample space. Now usually when we talk about random a random variable being a real valued function whose domain is a sample space, it's talking about like taking 1 and then like mapping that to a probability but like this is like a bit different it's like a it's like a, a diff it's like a deeper level of the random variable being a function uh, in this case the random variable one function on the sample point omega one yields a one so this is our this is our function and then the average operator is what's called a functional of that random variable. So I made up a pretend sample here where we've got, like let's say we took, the, let's say this is our entire population. This is everyone in the population. Everyone fills out the census and there's five people. This is like a very small country indeed. There's only five people. And we get one, two, we get two omega ones, two omega twos, and an omega four, just, just for example. So let's suppose we wanted to ask 
for the average um, of the first random variable, of the gender random variable. So what we would do is we would need to sum up the number of people um, Right, we've got basically for omega 1, we have two people, which is this 2, times the random variable function on omega 1, which is 1. Okay, so we're going to sum up that with our two omega 2s times random variable 1 on omega 2 which is 1 also and so we we get this sort of thing and we're so we're just totaling up basically the number of ones we get and then dividing by the total number of people in our population so this is like right in line with the normal sort of concept of what an average is it's just it's sort of like hidden in this cumbersome like sample space thing. Uh, and then as we can see from the first thing that we demonstrated, we could think of this equivalently as like a proportion of the number of ones that we had, or the, the proportion of people that were omega-1 realizations times x1 realized at omega-1 plus the proportion in um, omega-2 plus the proportion here, which is one-fifth omega, uh, sorry, x1 is zero for an omega-4 guy, so we get zero, and this ends up being the same thing. So the big picture thing that we need to see is a x is equal to one over the population size times the sum from k equals 1 to n of the number of people in that instantiation times the random variable the value of the random variable at that sample point and we know that this is also equal to the sum from k equals 1 to n of the proportion of people in that omega group times x omega k. Okay, so that's what the thing's saying. Sorry about this being as difficult as it is, but...